wisdom, prudentia, justice, justicia, temperance, temperantia, courage, fortitudo. Applying ancient philosophy to modern life, this is the Sunday Stoic. Salway, and welcome to the Sunday Stoic Podcast. This is Steve coming to you from Conway, Arkansas. This week's episode is on virtue and the duty that goes along with virtue. So virtue or erite, human excellence, is what we're striving after. Trying to be the best humans we can be. So we have to think about what do we think human nature is and and what would be the best example of that. This is virtue ethics. Trying to think about what the best example of someone who's like us, a human being, might be, and then try to live up to that or make progress towards that. That's what we're trying to do. And, you know, it's complicated in in uh, the field of Stoicism because the uh, ancient Stoics believed that the, the Logos permeated all things. There was this divine intelligence holding together uh, a rock, holding together uh, the planet, uh, and then it was even more concentrated uh, or under more tension, let's say, in a tree, which made a tree alive. And then in an animal, it was even more so. In, in a human being, we have the life-giving uh, uh, portion of the divine. Uh, we have the uh, animating principle of the divine, but we also have the intelligence, uh, uh, the capability, anyway, of being reasonable. And so the Stoics thought this was a pretty big deal, and uh, therefore we have to live up to this divine spark we've been given. But also, more than that, we are all brothers and sisters of our fellow human beings because they too have this divine spark. We are all children of Zeus, or the One, and we have to live up to that. Now, you can also view that from a secular perspective. We absolutely do all share a mitochondrial Eve. We are all cousins. And we are definitely social beings. And we should live up to that. We we have uh, 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 our morals, and those morals derive, can derive anyway, from, the, from oikiosis, this idea that, okay, we love ourselves as infants, we love our parents, then we can expand on that. We love our families. We love our community. We love the world, and and uh, we can we can use that and uh, combine it with stoic practices like the view from above and uh, and other techniques to to grow in um, our let's just call it affection for the world, for those around us, and our sense of duty for them, and then we can do the best job we can by being the most principled virtuous people we can throughout the short time we have on this earth. And if we are virtuous and we take action and we are are mindful of our actions to make sure that our actions are lining up with our principles, then we are going to influence people for the better. Of Leisure by Seneca, number three. I have laid any commandment upon myself to do nothing contrary to the teaching of Zeno and Crispus. But because the matter itself allows me to follow the precepts of those men. For if one always follows the precepts of one man, one ceases to be a debater and becomes a partisan. Would that all things were already known, the truth were unveiled and recognized, and that none of our doctrines required modification. But as it is, we have to seek for truth in the company of the very men who teach it. The two sects of Epicureans and Stoics differ widely in most respects, and on this point among the rest, nevertheless, each of them consigns us to leisure, although by a different road. Epicurus says the wise man will not take part in politics, except upon some special occasion. Zeno says the wise man will take part in politics unless prevented by some special circumstance. The one makes it his aim to seek leisure. The other seeks it only when he has reasons for doing. But this word reasons has a wide signification. If the state is so rotten 
as to be past helping, if evil has dominion over it, the wise man will not labor in vain or waste his strength in unprofitable efforts. Should he be decent in influence or bodily strength, if the state refuse to submit to his guidance, if his health stand in the way, then he will not attempt a journey for which he is unfit, just as he would not put to sea in a worn-out ship or enlist in the army if he were an invalid. Consequently, one who has not yet suffered either in health or fortune has the right, before encountering any storms, to establish himself in safety, and thenceforth to devote himself to honorable industry and inviolate leisure. And the service of those virtues which can be practiced even by those who pass the quietest of lives. The duty of a man is to be useful to his fellow men, if possible, to be useful to many of them. Failing this, to be useful to a few. Failing this, to be useful to his neighbors. And failing them, to himself. For when he helps others, he advances the general interests of mankind. Just as he who makes himself a worse man does harm not only to himself, but to all those to whom he might have done good, if he had made himself a better one. So he who deserves well of himself does good to all others, by the very fact that he is preparing what will be of service to them. The Meditations of Marcus Aurelius, Book 6, Number 39 Bring your will to your fate, and suit your mind to your circumstances, and love those people heartily that it is your fortune to be engaged with. The Discourses of Epictetus, Book 3, Chapter 2 of these, the most important and most pressing is the first which is concerned with strong emotions, for such emotions does not arise except when the will to get or the will to avoid fails of its object. This is which brings it with disturbances, tumults, misfortunes, bad fortunes, mournings, lamentations, envies, which make men envious and jealous, passions which make us unable to listen to reason. The second is the sphere of what is fitting, for I must not be without feeling like a statue, but must maintain my natural and acquired relations as a religious man, as son, brother, father, citizen. The third department is appropriate only for those who are already making progress, and it is concerned with giving certainty in the very things we have spoken of, so that even in sleep or drunkenness or melancholy no untested impression may come upon us unaware. So Seneca talks about the fact that he follows Chrysippus and he follows Zeno, these founding fathers of Stoicism. But he does so because he respects what they have to say. He does not follow them blindly. If you follow blindly, he says, you become a partisan. You are a fanatic. You are not a debater or a reasonable person that, you, that can change your idea as new facts come to light. But he says, in reality, we don't know everything. Our doctrines require modification. For example, incorporating the idea of evolution, scratching uh, out some of the ancient cosmology because science doesn't back it up, right? That's what we need to do if we are reasonable Stoics. If we cling to the ancient ways and, and to, you know, despite reality, we're, we're no longer Stoics. Even if we match up with the ancients and the way we believe, we are no longer Stoics if we are ignoring science and holding on to ancient cosmology. That's just uh, uh, nonsense, right? So we have to update our views based on reality. And uh, we are truth seekers, and we are seeking truth just like Zeno and Chrysippus did as, as we seek reality through our philosophy. And we are uh, called then through this concept of virtue and, and oikiosis, you know, like the expanding circles that you've all seen before, um, we, uh, we are uh, first start with ourselves and expand it outward to eventually include all humanity and perhaps even all life on earth. But we are called to help society and, and be a part of society, a productive member of society, to be useful. But we must do so with reason. 
And he goes on to say, Seneca goes on to say here that it only makes, uh, it only makes sense to do what makes sense. So you can't be useful to society uh, by helping a dictator or by helping a failing state. If it's going to collapse, there's no point in expending your energy on it. That is not using reason. That is, you know, you're, you might think you're doing your duty, but you're not actually doing any good. So uh, you have to use reason when making these decisions. When you make yourself useful, you have to make sure you're actually being useful f towards a virtuous end. And if you can't make yourself useful to, th to the world, he says make yourself useful to a smaller number of people, your community. If that doesn't work, make yourself useful to your neighbors. If that doesn't work out, make yourself useful to those in your house. <laughs> you know, make your circle of influence as big as you can but as re as reasonable as you can as well. Marcus goes on to say that uh, he needs to align his will to fate, so love his fate, his mind to what is happening, so don't wish for things that aren't really occurring, align everything to what is really happening, what is real, and to love those who it is your fortune to work with. Once again, it's virtuous to be useful and to work with others to help others. That is the whole point of this philosophy, not to grow your resume or uh, uh, how to work harder at the gym. It is to help others. Epictetus then uh, brings up uh, the, the uh, fields of desire, action, and assent, something we haven't focused on for quite a long time. Go back to some old episodes if you've forgotten about those three fields. He starts off by saying, your emotions won't be out of control if you seek only those things which are in your power. That's the field of desire. And then he says, going into action, then we must put into action um, our principles. And we, we, in and, and doing so, we can't be feelingless like a statue. We, we are not cold statues like some would depict the Stoics. But we are uh, compassionate in many ways. Uh, we do our duty. Uh, to others around us, according to our roles in society, whether you know, are you the president? Are you a governor? Are you a teacher? Are you a factory worker? Well, then do your role. Help those around you. Uh, are you a parent? Are you a child? Help those around you. That is your duty as a Stoic, and and we can expand that now, not only to those around us, but the earth itself. Uh, what are you doing to be a good steward, a good citizen of planet Earth? And lastly, he, he talks about ascent, which is kind of like mindfulness. And he, he says, watch your impressions in all circumstances, because if you are assenting to nonsense, then uh, you're never going to live up to those uh, other two, uh, action and desire, are not going to be aligned properly. If you're not watching what you assent to, what you uh, take in and accept as truth. Just like Seneca says, we can't take in things as truth just because Chrysippus said it, just because Zeno said it. We have to use our own standards, our own modern standards, to decide how reality works and how best to live our lives. So take that all into account. Uh, you too are seekers of truth, just like Zeno, just like Marcus Aurelius, just like Chrysippus. You are following in their footsteps. You don't have to walk in the same steps they did, but you can definitely kind of follow their general direction on the path towards the good life. All right, have a good week, all. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to uh, seize the day. Shoot me an email if you want, sundaystoke at gmail.com. And until I see you again, carpe diem.